Hi, this is Todd McKinnon of Warner Electric Supply. I'm going to try and quickly show how to set up a 1783 NATR network address translation device by scratch. Um, first off, I'm going to want you to set the system up similar to this. Um, an Ethernet switch up here. That'll be for the public Ethernet switch. You plug the NATR device. The front port of that is considered your public port for your NAT device. And then also have another switch for your private side Ethernet switch. Uh, the private side will plug into one of the two bottom connectors, two bottom RJ45s on the NATR. Once you have your 1783 NATR powered on and plugged into the appropriate switches, what you're going to want to do is look at the switch settings on the top of the NATR. Um, set them as follows right here with switch 2 on, switch 1 off, and switch 3 off. That way it will give the 1783 NATR an IP address of 192. 168.1.1. Once you've done that, um, the next thing you'll need to do is set up your laptop to be on that same subnet address. So set your laptop up to some address like 192.168.1. whatever, 15. To set your IP address up on your computer, all you'll need to do is go into the control panel, Go into your network and sharing center if it's Windows 7, change network adapter, and then just go to your network card properties, and you'll need to just set it to a static IP address. Like I said, 182.168.1.15 should be fine with 255.255.255.0 as the subnet address. Now once you've got the IP address for your laptop set on the same subnet as the NATR, um, there's a couple things you can do. If you go in with RS links, if you're using Rockwell, um, when you set up your Ethernet driver to use the same, same setup that your um, subnet as the NATR what you'll see right here, you'll see something that says 192.168.1.1. That is going to be your um, NATR device. When you do this initially, that might be a question mark right there. Um, and then what you can do is just right click on that and upload the EDS file right from the device. And then it'll upload the device. EDS file for you and then you'll have a nice picture in your RS links. The other option is to just download the EDS file which we show right here. You can go to the rockwellautomation.com slash resources slash EDS and find the 1783-NETR file there if you would like. This is just showing you what the configuration settings for those three dip switches at the top of the NATR, um, how you can configure those. Now that you got the NATR set up and you've got your EDS file downloaded, um, we can go and you'll have a configuration, let's say, similar to this picture here, where you've got your NATR. Like I said before, this is the public side switch. It can be whatever Ethernet switch you want. And then on your private side, you probably have another Ethernet switch. So on your private side, you're going to be on a 192.168.1. something subnet. And then on the public side, let's say your public um, plant network is on a 10.10.10 .10 subnet. So that's what we're going to set up the NAT mapping for in the system. Um, this way, it will allow you to get access to any of the devices down on the private side of the network. Um, we'll just map whichever things you 
want to be able to get to, say you're plugged into your office network, plant network, up here on your public switch, we'll just map, say, your compact logics, maybe your PowerFlex 525 drive, so that you can get access to it from a, your office location. So now that you've got everything configured on the NATR, um, your laptop set up, all you need to do is go into any web browser. I'm just going to use Chrome. Um, and put in the IP address of your NATR. In my case, it's 192.168.1.1. This will then bring up the web page, and this is where we configure the NATR, where you set up your NAT tables and um, configure your IP address. Um, once we've got everything configured, I can then go ahead and change my um, private IP address on my NATR right from this web page and configure it. One thing to note, the default username is admin, A-D-M-I-N, and then the default password for the NATR is going to be whatever the serial number is of your 1783 NATR. Um, in my case, it's A. 0043A07. That number is written right on the NATR device itself. Um, it didn't prompt me for it here because I was already in this web page earlier, but the first time you go in, it'll ask for the login, user login, and password. Now, once we're in the web page, let's go to the configuration tab, and this is where we set up our network address translation tables. Um, there's where my admin and my password comes in. Um, I had already set up a couple of different NAT routes for my device. In my case, I have my public IP address subnet as 192.168.2. Um, this is going to be whatever your office or plant network subnet is. And then the private IP address, these are the IP addresses of my Compact Logics, PowerFlex drives, PanelV Pluses, whatever you want them to be. They could be computers for that matter. Let's set up a new NAT route, um, 192.168.2.155, let's say. And then on the private side, I've got something at 168.1.144. And this is a 7056.en2t. You don't need to put anything in this. It's just a description. Um, notice that the public last octet, they don't have to match when you're setting up your NAT table. Um, so I just did that so that you knew that you could do it. And then I'll add a rule. And notice and there it shows up in my configuration. Now, one thing I probably should have done initially is gone into the public network and set your public network interface. Like I said, mine is going to be 192.168.2. whatever. So the 2.1 will be the IP address of my public port on the 1783 NATR. So that front port is now going to be addressed as 192.168.2.1. And I'm just going to use a subnet of 255.255.255.0. Um, again, like I'd mentioned before, as far as the... And then on the private side, I can just leave it um, to 192.168.1.1, or I can change the private network to be a different subnet, just be aware once you do that, um, if it's on a different subnet than your laptop, um, you're going to have to change the IP address of your laptop and go in and attach to the web page again. So um, that's where you set that up. If you look at the bottom when you're done, you just always need to remember to apply changes as well so that those take effect. And in fact, um, once you apply the changes, 
I'd recommend powering down the unit and powering it back up just to make sure those changes took effect. All right, so at this point, everything should be configured for the NATR. Um, I've gone in and set up my translation NAT table. Um, I've got a public network of 192.168.2. whatever, a private network of 192.168.1 whatever subnet um, and at this point I should be able to fire up my RS links so now once I go into RS links one thing in order to get access through the public network you need to use the standard AB Ethernet driver in RS links. You cannot use the Ethernet IP driver. So you'll go in and you'll set up your Ethernet driver. And in there, you're going to have to tell it what IP address to look at. So what I had done previously is I had set up the NAT table to, to do a NAT route of 192.168.2.155. And then that actually goes to the private address of 192.168.1.144 is the way I'd set it up. And uh, I needed to go in to my network configuration for my laptop, change my subnet address, my static IP address for my network adapter to be 192.168.2. Subnet. And then I was able to see my control logic rack. And uh, that's the way the NAT router works. Uh, hopefully that will answer some people's questions. You might have to go through the video a couple times, but just thought I'd make it to allow me to remember what I did, if nothing else. Thank you. Bye-bye.